Atheist Nomads, episode 142, News Live in Tacoma. Oh, God. Woo! Yay! And Lauren, would you like to do a, uh, a different disclaimer than usual or not? Um, I guess we can go ahead and do the typical discri- disclaimer, but live. Okay. Uh, something about uh, inappropriate for uh, younger audiences... Uh, talk about hoo haws, which we actually, yeah, which we actually are this time. So stop sending us emails requesting <laughs> us to talk about hoo haws. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, please be advised. This, right. is, this is the sound of me drinking. Okay, so yeah. intro music will play Ow, here. I just poke my eye. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us today is Lauren. Yay, I'm the cute one. Yes, my lovely wife. Uh, we are recording live in Tacoma, Washington at Doyle's Public House. Uh, the As you will notice, this is more echoey than normal. That's because we are, you know, in a place that we don't actually control. We have an audience, which is really cool. This is only the second time Wesley and I have actually recorded together. Oh my goodness. Let alone in the same time zone. And (laughs) we actually have people here, more people watching than recording. So, (laughs) hooray. (laughs) Usually it's just our dogs looking at us disapprovingly. Oh, God. Now you have people looking at you disapprovingly. You're like, when are you going to throw the ball? Throw the ball, Lauren. Throw the ball. (laughs) No, don't take the ball. Just throw it. So, uh, Wesley, how have you been? Oh, not too bad. Um, putting my motorcycle through its paces, and we've had some fun cooking and going out places with you guys. So. Oh, yeah. Wesley has a new title. He is now the Master of Ribs. Fucking A. I tickle them all. He made me moan more than I have in probably a decade. He's not even joking. I feel Those a ribs little were deflated. amazing. He food gasmed over my ribs. Yes. And I am not ashamed. And Lauren, you have a challenge. I'm a little ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> a man has made him have sounds like that more than you have. Oh, yeah. They were good ribs. <laughs> What's the name of that device that you... Let's plug. Oh, uh, sous vide. It's a... Uh, sous vide. Yeah, temperature-controlled water bath, and it's really fancy and blah, 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 blah. Oh, but, very nice. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Cool, cool. Yes. Dustin, how have you been? Uh, I've been... Pretty good. Uh, Work has been quieting down a bit. I got the normal recording setup, I think, finally figured out. Only need a couple more cables, and I'll have everything all nice and stabilized. I am loving the new interface, but as you add in additional, more complicated stuff, it's always, you know, there's there's a, a learning curve and setup curve. So I am feeling much better about that. And those ribs were amazing. And he got a promotion at work. So oh, that's oh yeah, nice. yeah. Uh, it's a meaningless promotion to level two that comes with a small raise. So, hooray! More money. Yay! And Lauren, how about you? Uh, still in the middle of my medication change, so I have become filterless. You're as very has been perky. Pointed out, and I have a lot of energy, which yes. is awesome. Um, but <laughs> I do tend to say everything that's on my mind. Mm. So I'm, I'm working on that. One really nice thing, though, is you don't have to turn. I wasn't trying to turn you. I was just turning the microphone. All right. Uh, one, one nice thing, though, Lauren, I do have to give you some props for. You uh-huh. knew that you were filterless before I said anything. Yeah, yeah. At so least at it least wasn't a self-aware. surprise. I'm self-aware filterless. So. Yes. Which sounds terrible. That's like being... It's completely a, it's, shit-faced and yet aware of everything. It's been a constant guilt trip, yeah. So, and I also just got a job. It pays a whole $7.35. Yay! It's $0.10 cents over the Idaho minimum wage. Hooray! So, yay for Dollar Tree. But, <laughs> you know what? We're over here in Tacoma, and I'm like, you know, screw that. I'm. We need to move. Yeah. I, I need to get a job over here. Yeah, well. <laughs> that would be nice. I, I need to get some certifications and, and uh, apply that's, for more jobs out here. Yeah, and that's basically a shout out to all of you guys who live in the area. Find us jobs and a place to live. <laughs> and, and, and for me, it wouldn't be just moving here. It would be moving back here since I have lived in this area before. For me, it would be moving from the Snake River to the ocean, which it would be mind-boggling. And amazing. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and move on into dusting off the degree. That really needs a theme song. Do, do, do. <laughs> so we've been working through the kind of like the, the whole Christian concept of God 
a Judeo-Christian concept of God, expanding into you know one to two to four or five to thousands. Well, now we got to one that really is more of a God than the other saints, Mary. Mm. Uh, in the Bible, Mary was a young woman who had been born to elderly parents who were childless. And she was engaged to Joseph when an angel came either to her or Joseph, depending on which version of the story you look at. Uh, it would seem like it'd be Joke one or the other or both, but no, no, it's they're, they're, they contradict. Uh, the Bible is really good at contradicting itself. No. And came to either of them and said that God's spirit would come upon her and knock her up. Or come in her. <laughs> yep, yep. And just the tip, just the tip. <laughs> so then Joseph took her as his wife, but he didn't consummate the relationship until, or at least while she was pregnant with Jesus. That's the only thing the Bible says is that he didn't fuck her while she was knocked up. Once that was over, all bets are off, unless you ask the Catholics. Uh, tradition is where Mary really comes alive. She is venerated as a saint in the Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, and Lutheran traditions. She's also revered in Islam, the most revered woman in Islam. Well, that's, that's not good. saying much. No, well, oh no. That's still slightly above dogs. No, no, no okay, okay. It's better than nothing. I don't know. Dogs can be pretty, fo- be pretty fucking cool, though. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and then Protestants generally, with the exception of the Anglicans and Lutherans, Protestants really downplay her role since she isn't actually talked about much in the Bible. At a minimum, when she is revered, she is viewed as the mother of Christ, and as, as such, she has special access to his ear over the other saints, because you know, he was her mom, or she was his mom. A Jewish mom, too, so. Mm-hmm. You, you would think there would be less access. I mean, like, who actually answers the phone when their mom calls? Seriously. I usually do. I do. It would be kind of weird if mine no. did. She's dead. Mm-hmm. But, well, uh, okay. Yeah, but you would really listen, wouldn't you? No, actually, when she was live, I dodged her calls, too. To be honest. <laughs> she was not a nice person. Fair enough. Fair enough. I bet Mary was a little nicer. Mm. Now, she was the one that, that bitched at him for not making more wine. Wine when... at, the, yeah, at the fucking party, yeah. Dude, yeah. well, I'm sorry, but the stereo cut tape type comes up yet again. Mm-hmm. Jewish mom. So, anyway, at the very extreme on the, these traditions, we he have the Catholics. He was only a carpenter, after all. He could have been a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, to the Catholics, the Immaculate Conception was not her getting pregnant by God. It was her being born without original sin herself. So, Mary's conception was immaculate, not the conception that happened within her. And so, as a result, she was born without original sin. They also believed that she was always a virgin, that Joseph never consummated the relationship. Obviously. Basically, that he was eternally uh, cockleded by God. That is the ultimate cockle. He's like, I I can't touch Uh that. It's going to break something. The wrath of God is not something you want to mess with. Especially a jealous ex-boyfriend God. Who would want to follow God? I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. So between these two factors, she is permanently innocent. And as such, God couldn't let her die. Instead, she was translated directly into heaven. Bodily, never facing right? death. Bodily raised up into the heavens. So, I mean, that puts her above even the saints. All the normal saints... And when you take that and add to it the mother of God, <laughs> well. uh, she's even above Enoch and Elijah, the other people who supposedly never died oh. and just went straight to heaven. And now, of course, as crazy as this is, it is actually taken to an even further extreme, which we will cover next time <gasps> with the Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. Ah. We're going to talk a little bit about our honeymoon on that one. We got to see mm-hmm. a whole thing about it. It was cool. It was cool, actually, when it comes to studying cultures. That is like a whole little thing on its own. Yep. Oh, and this, uh, our podcast is brought to you by Archway Hosting and listeners like you. Uh, Yay! That's you guys. Yay. You guys bored yet? Hello. <laughs>
<laughs> so, Wesley, what do you have for us for history? A whole bunch of not much. All right. So this is Dan. Oh God, what day is it? Uh, uh, April fourteenth, <laughs> isn't it? Yep. Okay. April four. Yeah. Good. I'd be. I'd be really. You know, sad that's the great I thing about up. starting with this day in history. You don't actually. Well, have to actually, today is April ten. Yes. This is going to the rest of the world on April fourteenth. Good. So I didn't fuck up the date. All nope. right. All right. Uh, this day in history, the year. This day in history, April fourteenth, the year starting with seventeen seventy five. The first abolition society in North America is established. The Society for the Relief of Free Negroes Unlawfully Held in Bondage is organized in Philadelphia by Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin Rush. A side note, (laughs) the search for a better and shorter name starts a day later on April 15th. Wow, yeah, because that was a very, should we say, full name. That was a mouthful. So, this day in history, the year 1828. Noah Webster copyrights the first edition of his dictionary. The word twerking is taken out a year later, only to be added almost 200 years later. No shit. <laughs> twerking was in the original one? Or yes, it? obviously. Oh. <laughs> uh, Careful so, with your sarcasm, sir. So, we are drinking. I will mention that again. <laughs> oh, yes. You're, you're almost through the Guinness half of your um, what it, snake bite. Oh, yeah. Guinness on top, cider on the bottom. And we normally don't let Wesley drink when we record. This is true. I usually do energy drinks. And it still only brings me up to about half speed. Uh, This day in history, 1846, the Donner Party of Pioneers departs Springfield, Illinois. (laughs) Sorry, I watch a lot of Mystery Science Theater, and they bring up the Donner Party constantly. So it's just like, Donner Party, yes! (laughs) So the daughter party leaves Springfield, Illinois for California in, in what will be become a very, very uh, long year journey of hardship, cannibalism, and survival. It's really. the cannibalism that's the fun part. It oh, really yeah. Is. I bet they had good taste in ribs, too. I mean, if you're going to... Oh, moaning. Oh, mm. God damn, Wesley. <laughs> Ah. The How other white work? meat. Oh, the other, other white meats. Are you sure the ribs we had last night were beef? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I thought they were pork. Walmart. They it's, fucking saw whatever. He's so, sweet know. totting this. Oh, what you said it was Walmart? They, those so, were Walmart. That was probably Walmart their ribs. underplayed workers. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. they die. They fork them in the back. Sure. pig and there's the word long in front of it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Long pig. Long <laughs> yeah. Do we need to get another, uh, get a mic down there? Oh, yeah. We got two mics right there. You know, bring one for you guys. Take the You're black one. It's longer. That's what she said. <laughs> Yay! It finally worked. Well, that's actually what he said. And yeah. I don't know. Anyways. It's uh, intimidating. Yeah, and for anybody lo- anybody looking at uh, the our viewers, Meredith is purposely trying to stay out of the shot. There she is. Okay. Yay, Yay! There's Meredith. So the... Th- the year 1865, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln is shot in Ford's Theater by John Wilkes Booth. Early audience participation style theater popularity popularity soon takes a dive. Not to be brought back until Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> <laughs> and those stupid improv shows. I am a tree. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> on the train <laughs> in the rain <laughs> uh, so yeah. this day in history 1912 the British passenger liner RMS Titanic hits an iceberg in north in the North Atlantic and sinks soon after uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is robbed of his first Oscar, Oscar nomination <laughs> I am I am really feeling this, this wow alright this and is a good beer actually as a result Bastard. of of Titanic and how all the girls in school really really liked it, Ugh. I would not watch a Leonardo DiCaprio movie until Lauren made me watch one. All oh, right, I made um, you watch Leonardo DiCaprio and a George Clooney. Yes. Wow. And George Clooney, I hated even earlier when he ruined Batman. He even admits yeah. that he ruined Batman. He God feels bad damn. about that. It, it, what was sucked with that is it wasn't actually him. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the one who really ruined it for <laughs> yeah, me. The Mr. Fr- Freeze? Freeze was fucking oh. okay. Yeah, but we love his other movies. I think if you rewatched it with uh, with that like Arnold Schwarzenegger George Clooney mentality. was the only one I didn't like, mm-hmm. so I was able to place all of the blame on him. 
All right. Uh, Mike, so, Mike, okay. Mike Gillis actually does a add-on to his show mm-hmm. that you should listen to. Well, we are. That, that oh, yeah. talks about Arnold specifically. Arnold. Uh, Podcast La Vista, baby. baby. Yes. So this is Donner Party, Titanic, Abe Lincoln shot. Yeah, this is this a is fucking a awesome day. day in, oh, I, got, I, got, I got one it last small one, though. I think it just dawned on me. The you, the, this Don, was the, the Donner party, Don you? No, that this was the actually Don, a day Don. that we Anyways. like learned about in history class where we listed off all of these things. This is a really oh, fun nice. day. Yeah. The year 2005, the Oregon Supreme Court nullifies marriage licenses issued to gay couples a year earlier in Multnomah County. Yeah, sadly, Boo. Oregon gets a little less fabulous. Fab. That's it. Fabulous. All right. Okay. Fabulous. Not. And uh, let's see. So now we love hearing from our listeners. You can always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. Tweet us at atheistnomads. Hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or call us and leave us a message at 541 203 0666. We might even play it on the show. Actually, if you do leave us a voicemail, we'll almost always play it on the More show. More than likely. Yeah. yeah. And, if and, we it's love something, it. and if it's something like Happy Birthday, Jesus, we will play it more than once. <laughs> that was one of the early messages we got. Aww. Oh god. Yeah, that was that was horrible and funny. You also notice <laughs> that that was all mus- all muscle memory. It's like getting kicked in the groin and like pulling away. He's like he could list off that phone number like nothing. So, Lauren, what do you have for us for science? Science. Bitches. <laughs> science, bitch. <laughs> um, we've got some interesting uh, things that just showed up this week. Uh, the first one. Okay, so we've discovered that most basic building blocks for life have been found on asteroids, comets, etc. Well, we have recently discovered that one of the biggest ones that we're missing, and that is ribose. That is the R in RNA. Um, using ultraviolet Ooh. irradiation on some uh, interstellar ice pieces, they have basically created R- the ribose sugar. This means totally legit. We comet, asteroid, ice, crash into Earth, life. So the whole panspermia thing. Totally. Sweet. Totes. I just love saying panspermia. Because the most recent one. I love saying amorphophallus, which is the name for um, those giant carnivorous, not carnivorous, those giant uh, plants. Penis plants. Penis plants. So the the last recent one on that was the, they'd figured out that everything in RNA, or at least everything needed to build RNA, could be created by lightning strikes in the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. At least, So you know, a combination of a lightning then. storm and some ice from an asteroid, and you have life on Earth. Sweet. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, so so there we may be... literally are made of star stuff. Yes, well. In well, even more ways. In more ways than one. We guaranteed but we I'm are. Not sure Shooting we... star stuff. I'm not yeah. sure if they found everything quote unquote everything but this was the last big building block that they were looking for so that's awesome very nice lovely yes next up this is a little bit of science a lot of woo but it had to be brought up because it's isaac (laughs) newton um recently the chemical heritage foundation purchased his uh lost uh recipe for sophic mercury Sophic mercury is a key ingredient in making the Philosopher's Stone, which apparently Isaac Newton was a wee bit more than obsessed with. Huh. <laughs> he searched for years on, on creating the Philosopher's Stone, and this was before there was a field of chemistry or even a fields of science. Um, so even though it ended up being total bunk, uh, it was basically him exploring chemistry, and I think that is actually still pretty damn cool. Hell yeah. So people have been saying, I can't believe Isaac Newton believed in this stuff. But I can't believe it's not you can't, butter. You can't look back, <laughs> hindsight, on science and say, oh, well, they went down the wrong path, so they were stupid. No, they were doing what they were doing. They were exploring, and good for him. And last up, uh, we were talking about hoo-hahs. Vajayjays. Vajayjays. What? Well, at least the big part attached to said vajayjay, the uterus. A uh, woman recently, an unnamed 26-year-old, received the first U.S. uterus transplant. Unfortunately, it was rejected and had to be taken out four days later due to a yeast infection that was causing a blood blockage to the said uterus. Um, as a result, failed uh, transplant. However, they're going to try it again because they have so many people lined up for this. Out of This was 200 people that applied... They narrowed it down to 10, and then finally the one woman that they did choose 
So there's lots waiting in line for this possible transplant. We were discussing this earlier, actually. Yeah. We were saying if they uh, made the transplant possible, would they be able to uh, salvage uteruses from um, cadavers? I always thought that that would be kind of interesting, just one well, more is organ that transplant on the list. Is that uteruses or uteri? Uteri. Well, conceivably, think, there's no reason know. why you couldn't because it is an organ. Yeah. And like any other organ, it's potential the potential if you have enough matches i the part that i would be the most concerned with would be could you actually reconnect enough nerves and blood vessels blood vessels yes nerves no but then also <laughs> if because the whole point of that is would be so that you could carry a baby i do know with a lot of organ transplant uh programs you do end up spending a lot of time on some very powerful immunosuppressants yep and immunosuppressants uh we're getting a nodding head um <laughs> that that that's gonna immu- yeah. yeah that doesn't seem like something that would suggest you should go get pregnant now not right away but it is the building it's the the, the baby step huh towards <laughs> that uh-huh. final stage where in maybe several years you would be able to have your own baby that's why it would be targeted for girls or women who were in their younger um, baby hmm. child rearing age. Gazuntite, you tried to cover that it's, up, but there was no okay, way. Okay, now, honestly, this would be one of those where I would say this is awesome that they're trying. Yeah, um, it's been going this on is, outside of the U.S. for a few years, but this is like literally the beginning stages of this kind of transplant technology, and it's really exciting. It failed, but you always have failures before successes, so... Well, it was like the first baboon heart transplanted into human <laughs> failed. That's a baboon heart. Second one, I think, worked. Uh, now they use pigs, right? They use pigs more than baboons. Or the mechanical ones are amazing. But yeah. Well, in mechanical, you also have the advantage of your body's less likely to try to reject it because it's not detecting flesh that is not you. Right. The more you know. Ding. <laughs> oh, so that's the end of science. That's the end of science. Um, let's see. Before polishing your religion, um, we're gonna have a break. You can. Yes, we're gonna take an actual break. Yay. If you'd like one. We're gonna have our guests sing the uh, Speed Racer song for us. <laughs> they did so good earlier. <laughs> Okay, three, two, one. Go Speed Racer, go Speed Racer, go Speed Racer, go! And that is in honor of uh, Seattle's current going Emerald City Comic Con, which I missed because I forgot my pass. Yeah, and what's funny is we were we had left the house at what, 8.30? Yeah. And it yep. didn't strike me until 4.15 in the afternoon. Oh, we were, like, summiting Snoqualmie <laughs> Pass. And she looks at me and is like... I forgot my fucking pass. <laughs> yep. Head hit dashboard. It was, it was great. Anyway, so do you guys need a drink or anything? You do. I do need another drink, yeah. There's another one sitting here. Mac and Jack. All right. I will take it. Okay, fourth beer. And these are actually some pretty good Cheers. beers. Mac and Jack's not, it's what, 6.5% alcohol, I think? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty light. Oh, it's pretty God. light. I've had like three of these Diet Cokes. Uh, and with this break, I'm it is wasted. important to remind you that you can always support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash atheistnomads or at atheistnomads.com. On the right sidebar, there is uh, the PayPal and Patreon links. And don't forget that lovely little Amazon link because, you know... It'll give us a little bit of scratch, and you won't see a difference in what it, what you pay. So, fucking a, why don't you do that? Because you're yeah, yeah. And it's because of our listeners that we are able to pay for hosting and buy new equipment. And in at least and, the case of one drink tonight, drink hey, beer. Thank yeah. you, Arthur. Hooray, Arthur. And it's because Arthur. Of, Cheers. yes. Arthur. Cheers. And it was because of the ability, the ability to write off certain business expenses <laughs> that we were able to come to Tacoma at all. Thank you, federal government. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Right that off was mileage. Enthusiastic. And... <laughs> <laughs> Tax write offs are fun, goddammit. Yes. So. All right. So, now? for politics and religion, uh, we are going to be continuing our state legislative update. Go 
I know. And one story we have been following closely is the Idaho Bible in Schools bill. Mm. Because this one is just so fucking deliciously disgusting and unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Governor Butch Otter, who I normally affectionately call Little Bitch Otter, uh, has actually shown himself to not always be a little bitch. Uh, He vetoed this bill. Woohoo! He had been told by his attorney general it was unconstitutional, violating not only federal but state constitution. He and he has demonstrated through up to this point his entire time in his three terms as governor. Yes, three terms. He's very as popular. Governor. He won with like sixty-seven percent of the vote for his third election. For all the whole 1,200 voters that bothered to show up. And he, Not, I don't know if that's the actual he, he has demonstrated up to this point that he is more than willing to waste literally $2 million in taxpayer money to support unconstitutional uh, legislation. and Anti-gay marriage there. That was one of them. That, that was wasn't one. the only. No, that was, that was, that was one, one million, I think, was towards that. That was the most expensive. There was already, I think, $600,000 taken out of the state constitutional defense fund. Yeah. Quote, unquote. Constant, wait, constitutional defense fund. It's yep. a fund does, that does he Does the Constitution need defensing? defensing the, it's to defend the state constitution. To defend the state's rights to not follow federal law. Right. Okay. So, and so he blew through it. Yeah, and when the seven, <laughs> when, when the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decided that Idaho's attempt to not allow opposite or excuse me same sex couples to get married uh, was not constitutional and not justifiable, Butch Otter actually transferred a million dollars, mostly from the state transportation budget, Boo. to fund that. So. The Idaho Department of Transportation at this point look, basically... The look on Arthur's face just says it They all. will do what? absolute bare bones minimum to keep roads remotely drivable. If it's not the absolute minimum to make it so that trucks can drive on it, they won't touch it. Huh. So there's actually some streets in Boise that are state highway that need some serious upgrade. Not going to happen anytime soon because that'd require the state government to act. Well, anyway, Butch Otter, who has demonstrated this ability to waste money like crazy on stupid shit, vetoed this. All right, Butch Otter, fuckboy so of the week. Let's not well, fuckboy this week. This week, I actually, actually want to do a toast to Butch. Yeah. It was a Here, here to vetoing bill. this bad bill. Cheers. Yeah. Click. Um, yeah, huge relief, especially to all my teacher friends, because um, we already, those of us who grew up in the public school system in Idaho, have had to listen to teachers go around the whole evolution thing and uh, basically ruin it by doing it their own way. Um, but yeah, this was just one more, just one more co- uh, nail in the coffin there for that. And it is uh, worth noting that, as they say, a wrong cl- or broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> yes. And so moving on, Tennessee has passed a bill to name the Bible as its official state text. Tennessee. 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 And it is unknown, at least as the date of this recording, whether or not the governor will sign it. But the state attorney general has already said that it is unconstitutional. Yeah, that's officially endorsing the uh, primary religion. You know, that's the attorney so general beyond. actually said it violated both the first and third amendments. Now, if they wanted their official text to be OMG, I can kind of understand. <laughs> <laughs> text well, that was a joke there, phone joke. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know the joke's funny when you have to explain it. Yes. And when the audience yells, I got it! Yeah. Hooray! I'm yeah. coming! I'm a little slow, too. Yeah, thank you. The beer. Blame the beer. Oh, and shout out to Arrested Development for t- t- Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of the, this is really kind of a ridiculous legisla- piece of legislation because the 
as far as any effect it would actually have, it is absolutely nothing. It's like when Idaho last year, finally, the legislature decided to stop fighting an eighth grader who wanted to make the Idaho giant salamander the state amphibian. Toads love the ass salamander. They finally realized nothing will happen if they pass this bill except for shut up an eighth grader who hasn't left them alone since she was in third grade. <laughs> Four years. This that is awesome. one of those bills that they pass it, nothing happens. There is no actual benefit. What they stand to lose is a whole bunch of lawsuits and millions of dollars of taxpayer money. The only thing that changes really is an entry on Wikipedia. That's, yeah. it, that's about it. And, a- and add one line. And Civil Air Patrol cadets head from Mississippi, or excuse me, this is Tennessee, from Tennessee headed out Tennessee. on the International Air Cadet Exchange will have to learn all of their state's symbols. And they will have to be able to tell a Swedish atheist Air Force colonel that, yes, my state's official book is the Bible. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We'll see what happens. All right, so which brings us to Mississippi. Since we lost some video, we're going to go ahead and repeat this one. The yeah. Mississippi Church... Whoa, that's the wrong one. The uh, Mississippi Senate has passed the Protecting Freedom of Conscience from Government Discrimination Act. Okay. Yes, that is as bad as it sounds. Uh, late on Wednesday, on a 32-17 to 17 vote, the bill had previously passed the House, but might go, or, but does have to go back for reconciliation. And of uh, interest, this bill would define marriage as between one man and one woman, that sex is only appropriate and should only occur within such a marriage between one man and one woman. Boo. I mean, boo to all of it, but And that man and woman are based on the sex assigned at birth. Boo. So what they're trying to do is discriminate against uh, gay and LGBT, well, basically LGBT people. Right? Absolutely. That's the goal. But that's and the goal. But there is and a completely backwards way of looking at this because they're talking about in, inside of marriage. So that completely discriminates against uh, heterosexual people too yeah. that are not married. And, and so, which is fucking amazing. Yeah. So some of, the, some of the discussion on this bill that I've seen had to do with clerks asking and why would they ask? Well, it's obvious when two men or two women go in and ask for a marriage license that their life might not line up with the particular clerk's beliefs but like when Lauren and I went in to get our marriage license last year did they ask they you asked if you had for address. sex they did not but they asked for our address we had the same address we were living in sin <gasps> Woo! Yes. it's a good way yes, to go yes you were and living in sin if someone's personal belief actually can have any legal protection would be grounds to deny someone a marriage license. I would like to, to uh, toast this beer to uh, saying, fuck you to Kim Davis. <laughs> fuck you! Here, here. Fuck you! For asking too many personal questions when people are trying to get married. And also... Uh, since the next story is also from Mississippi, fuck you, Mississippi. Fuck you, Mississippi. Really. I P P I S S I S S I M. I'm I'm proud I can do that. I just the, like that the that the short term for the bill is. The Mississippi Church <laughs> Protection <laughs> Act. Klingon? So they're already protecting people's <laughs> conscience from government discrimination. Now they're actually protecting churches. So, oh, yay. Let's, yes. The oh. Mississippi Church Protection Act is one of those those uh, stories that I was kind of disappointed that our recording schedule of recording on Tuesday, releasing on Thursday, and then not doing news for another, you know, the week Two after weeks. next, uh, we were going to miss out on this. Well, I've listened to all of the other podcasts cover this, and they have talked about how, you know, the, this bill goes that it would create church death squads, that it would allow churches to have security teams with the same authority as cops. Um, all of this sounds quite outlandish and insane. Turns out, yes, that is outlandish, it is insane, and it's not what the bill says. <laughs> so what does it actually do? Uh, 
And it turns out all those crazy claims all started with a post on the th Free Thought Project blog, which was quickly expanded upon by Addicting Info. And then everybody just kind of worked from there. So it amends the state's concealed carry law to allow for concealed carry without a permit if it's in a holster. So far, does not apply to churches. And so far, that's what Idaho does. Idaho has actually uh, passed a bill that would allow for concealed carry without a permit. Well, Washington has open carry. Uh, it's not not legal, therefore it is legal. Mississippi also has open carry. Uh, this is just one step beyond that, and then this so is one step beyond that. So if it's in a holster, that. if it's in a inside the belt holster, it's fine. This is adding adding on to a bill from last year that would allow for concealed carry in a purse. A man purse? A if you have lady's one. purse. So now a man's purse is inside his pants. Or, or <laughs> That's what she said? Was, or was, in the pocket. Yeah. That's oh, what they... Fanny pack. <laughs> really? I, I was, I was going to go... Yeah, totally fanny pack. Total totally. fanny pack. All right. Yeah. So the second thing it does is it adds They're the so list sexy. of situations where killing someone is considered justified to include defending church or worship service attendees. And... I have, in the past, had a concealed carry license. That was a Washington State concealed pistol license that I applied for after testifying in a felony trial. And honestly, I was paranoid and freaked out after that. Uh, I never bothered to get an Idaho license, and I never bothered with any kind of renewal of it. Wesley has one in his hand right now. Mine is official. It's still legal. It's still valid. Mm -hmm. Washington State. So when I got that license in Washington, I looked into exactly what situations can I get away with killing someone? <laughs> well, when is that allowed? That you need to know that. If you're going to be carrying a weapon, you need to know when you can and cannot use it. And in Washington, anytime you are witnessing the commission of a felony you are it is considered justified to kill the person who's committing the felony when i moved to idaho i took a look at what's the rules there and i didn't bother getting a concealed pistol license in washington because there or excuse me in idaho because in idaho you have to be the victim you can't jump in and save people like so many gun fanatics are fantasizing about a good guy with a gun in idaho is a felon. Is as bad as the bad guy with That them. is awesome. So It makes sense because so you, guns tend to escalate mm -hmm. problems. So if you're in Washington and you see somebody robbing the McDonald's and you shoot the robber, you're fine. You Which can I get believe off has happened. Free. Even if you're not in said McDonald's and being threatened at mm -hmm. the time, you right. go in and play cowboy. Yeah. yeah. And if you're in Idaho and you see somebody, which is an open carry state, so you've got that pistol on your hip. If you pull that pistol and you shoot the person who is threatening the clerk at the McDonald's, the cash register attendant, you will go to prison for homicide. Yeah. Woo! Or at least I, manslaughter. I am fine with that. So what Mississippi has done here at this point is they have included in the situations where you are allowed to kill someone is if you are on a church security team and you are protecting a fellow member of your church. So similar Within to Within the states, church or outside of the church as well? Somebody who is attending the church okay. service that, okay. involved in a, an activity of this church. Okay. That still sounds like police, uh, church, church security. Or even defending your family. Yeah. Any state that allows you to defend yourself allows you to defend your family. I could shoot someone who is threatening Lauren because she is my wife. That, that totally makes up for all the student loans. <laughs> so the third thing it does. I don't like your hair. The third thing this bill does is allows churches to create security teams. And then Dustin shoots me. Oh, okay. They must be trained in gun no, safety. Like and they must have a state firearms license. Some of the attention this has gotten is the fact that they can be trained by members of the church if they qualify to teach gun safety courses. People who are part of law enforcement or who are military members or veterans 
are considered by the state of Mississippi as being authorized to do these gun safety courses. I was going to say, if you're authorized, you're authorized. What difference does it make who you're teaching? I'm gonna. All I'm gonna say is that uh, the Navy, they. I mean, sure, you could be in the Navy and I, I suppose get qualified under this, but they don't treat. They don't teach you how to use any wet firearms in the Navy. And honestly, the Marines, most of them are 19 year olds, and <laughs> with M, with M16s that are really shoddy and bad looking. So um, I wouldn't oh, trust them man. either. You're opening up some hate mail there. Fucking hey, bring it. <laughs> um, so those Marines are like, they'll put you down in a puddle just because they're pissy and 19 year olds. All right. So anyway, the, the, this, these security teams would be allowed to engage in concealed carry while acting in that capacity within that church. This also changes the state law that has churches on the list of places where it is prohibited to have a firearm. So only these people can have a gun at church. Only if they are licensed to carry a concealed weapon and only if they have had training and been authorized by the church or other worship service organization (laughs) to carry said firearm. Well, of course the church is going to write off on that. Wouldn't it have been funny if Dylan Roof was in the military and got out and mm-hmm. yeah, and then got yeah. That was the, this is a reaction to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Absolutely. what if what if Dylan Roof was the one that you know got the training you know through the military and then became the security personnel for the for the church and then still shot up the church? And you're like, if it was why? the same church, he would have gone to jail for unjustifiable homicide. All I'm saying All, is like like. Why fucking have guns there? All justifiable homicide means is it is a defense you can attempt if you are indicted. Mm -hmm. And you are also less likely to get indicted because you have a likely to succeed defense. This is... Okay, this bill, in my opinion, is stupid because you don't need guns at worship services that increases the chances of somebody getting hurt. You're in a crowded room. This would be like being in a theater and a good guy with a gun starting to shoot back at somebody who's shooting at you. What's going to happen? You're going to have multiple multiple people, people with bullets flying everywhere. That yep. is not good. That would have at least made Superman versus Batman an okay. Oh, my God. This was totally like throughout my entire brain. It was like, it's just a vigilante. That movie sucked ass. The Shut mor- up. It was awesome. The morning after I moved to New York City, that happened. Some nut job shot his co-worker right across the street from the Empire State Building. And then the cops started shooting at oh the guy who God. was running down the street. Three, I think three bystanders got shot. Mm. All from the cops missing the gunman. Right. Holy yeah, shit. Right. Because he was a stormtrooper, apparently, in a former life. <laughs> God shit. damn. <laughs> Late reaction oh. laughter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's because stormtroopers always miss. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's funny now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely not a red shirt. So, but, but <laughs> back to, to this bill. It is, it's stupid. Flat out stupid. But if you're going to do it, this is the best way to do it. And one piece of criticism I've heard is what would, what's going to happen if a synagogue or a mosque tries to do this? Or the Satan temple. Well, what's going to happen I if that happens? Like, the Satanists if, are going to just take this and run with what's it. What's going to happen <laughs> if one of those groups try to do it? Absolutely nothing. Because the only time this is ever going to come up is if someone walks into that service and threatens someone, which actually means it's only going realistically will only happen if it is a black church in Mississippi, Mm. home of a lot of racists, or it is a synagogue or a mosque or a satanic temple. Come on, satanic temples, they they meet in like bookstores. White Christians will never get to use this defense. Yeah, that's true. Ever. They just protected a bunch of people that they probably didn't mean to. And realistically, none of those other groups will ever have security teams because they know that if they do and the cops ever have to show up, Everybody's that their own shot. people are getting shot. Yeah. 
I hope that they realize that. Because you know what happens when you get a concealed carry license? Like, I found out when I had one is when you get pulled over, you have to tell the officer whether or not you have a weapon, and you do not reach for your identification or your license or registration until you, you are jazz, told to do so. Do you just do jazz hands out the window? No, you no. put your just hands. You roll down the window and you put your hands on the steering wheel and you wait for direction. I would do jazz that, hands. That's why I no. That's why I I actually get my wallet out, put on on the dashboard before he gets to the car with my hands on the steering wheel. But even if so that I don't have to reach that, behind me. There's a lot of fear though in police when they see somebody doing stuff mm -hmm. sure. even re reaching over to the glove compartment i have been told sure. by police off by a police officer don't bother doing anything until the officer shows up because then you're allowed to grab because they can see everything you're doing yeah i'm, yeah. Not, I'm not taking that chance <laughs> because yeah. if they see you fiddling with stuff a lot of they they're scared they're gonna think that and they're gonna sure. get defensive sure but i would rather have my hands on the steering wheel with my wallet out before they even get to the window. Okay. All right. Well, I think that pretty much sums that up. Oh, wait. To rub salt in the wound, I'm currently texting with someone who actually got to touch Nathan Fillion. <gasps> oh, my God. I oh, know somebody wow. who knew somebody who touched Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I, the only text I got was, I touched his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. So, oh, Lauren. The, the stories they could have with, said if it was his nipple. <laughs> Lauren, with the podcast, we know people who know just about everyone. Yeah, yeah. but Nathan Fillion. I mean, that's like Neil Patrick Harris. We, you can't we, get a hold of we have interviewed people. Mm. We have interviewed people mm. in Hollywood on several occasions. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And so uh, we also are thinking of starting a new podcast. Uh, of Dustin and I watching sci-fi movies and discussing the universes and stuff like that because we watch a lot of sci-fi. Yeah. Which yeah. means that if since it's a no bad production, it would uh, pay for my comic conventions. <laughs> <laughs> Tax write-offs. Hell yeah. So Patreon, you know, if you guys, you know, if you're interested in that, let us know. And uh, we, not we'll Patreon, but... Well, Patreon, yes, of course. Um, we, what we'll be doing is the, the first episode we put out, we'll go on to the Atheist Nomads feed. Yeah, so it's with this, this new uh, podcast, we'll be uh, talking... Uh, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> so, fuck it. Um, <laughs> Bangladeshi uh, secular activist, oh. Nazamundi mm. Samad, a 28-year-old law student oh. and secular activist, was hacked to death with machetes and shot at a traffic junction last Wednesday. Bangladesh, what the fuck? Well, that's road rage. Well, I'm this just is saying. just another reminder to listeners in those kind of countries. Um, Hide. Please just move. be safe. Use it's tails. It's not worth your life. Tails. No. Move. Tails. It is a program. It's a, a live distribution. You can put it on a USB stick. You plug it into any computer, and it will give you anonymous access to the internet. No one will be able to track you. And the fact that we are talking about this, we are all on an NSA not watch list. Because <laughs> this is say, not the guess... first time we have talked about it. But if you link to or talk about Tails, the NSA will watch you. Yep. Yay. So, hooray. Hi, and we're speaking at Doyle's right now. So Yes, so please, please be safe. Oh, the battery is dead on that one. Uh, All right. Uh, Bye, audience. So the audience, we cannot see anymore. Uh, oh, thank you. Man. And we are... <laughs> I think we should just go ahead and do the feedback. Uh, we've got a couple more stories, though. Canada has closed its Office of Religious Freedom. Uh, Trudeau's oh. liberal government in Canada has announced that the mandate for the country's Office of Religious Freedom has expired, and he will not be bothering with renewing it. Hmm. This was it a didn't part... didn't do anything. It was the part of the Office of Religious Freedom, or excuse me, a part of the Foreign Affairs Department, and as a result of not renewing this mandate, the office is closing. This office was run by a reverend. It was all towards religious freedom, Oh, man, I'm burping. It was all focused on religious freedom for religious people and not promoting secularism 
which is what actually protects religious freedom. Yeah. Because an office of religious freedom might help say, yes, blasphemy laws are good. Somebody yeah. promoting secularism will say, no, blasphemy laws are stupid because everyone's religious speech is blasphemy. I'm drunk. All right. Yeah. The Trudeau government has said that anything that the state government or the, the nation's government. Uh, wow. The Trudeau government has said that. Any <laughs> violations of religious liberty Trudeau. will be attacked by Canada. They don't attack anyone. I no. have no <laughs> idea what the hell I'm saying. Um, I think you all know better than I. Yeah. This is the best part. <laughs> okay, we're. I, we're I'm okay, taking, so feedback. Do you want me to take over here? I'm taking over feedback. Are you our, our designated driver for yeah. feedback? So we are talking. This is the episode numbers, right? <laughs> yep. In yep. reference to uh, episode 137 with Trav Mamone, yeah. uh, that was. This is a nice little comment from Tanya Gibbs. I loved this episode. Thank mm-hmm. you. That's, Thank you. See, that's the stuff we love to hear Thank on you. YouTube today. On YouTube, uh, in reference to episode 138, news for March 17th, Tanya Gibbs. Wait a minute. I didn't hear anything about who has this episode. Pussy, pussy, so pussy. disappointed. Winky face. Oh, we I, talked about who has so much. Yes, we oh, did. I hope yeah. you're satisfied, Tanya. I know I am. <laughs> um, who has regarding oh, and in case you are not satisfied with that discussion of who has, Lauren, we recently purchased a replacement for something of yours that oh. broke. A hoo ha? No. We need to give it. We need to give it proper honor on the podcast. My Hitachi magic wand, after serving a precious five years at my side, died. Was it at your side or your front? Uh, Mostly front. (laughs) And it it kind of just wasn't working. I decided to like, well, that's funny. I pulled on the wire where it actually connected to the main shaft, I guess. And (laughs) big electric pop with a fire and it was magnificent i mean if you're going to go down that was the way to go down i, I disassembled there's better it ways found to go out down. it's the wires so much better ways to burn through in the all the way to the motor and, so we uh, bought a new one 50 it was it was half off amazon on amazon like the day hitachi after wand is is a definite it's oh. no longer hitachi no, no. Well, magic wand the magic wand bought it. and there's a spot no, in my no, no. back they, they just don't just, say hitachi nothing anymore. else will get that. or hitachi Distance themselves, but it's oh. still. I mean, yeah. They call it the magic mm. wand. Anyway. The back is an erogenous zone, though. So. Yeah. This sure. is no, well, yeah, but there is just a muscle spot right there that that thing just. So there's is right amazing. now a, a particular <laughs> special spot. Then there's the normal spot. Okay, the app, that one. That no, one. That's nice. not touch right now in public. <laughs> okay, regarding episode 140, Miles Greb, yep. ECC 1334. He was going to be speaking at Emerald City Comic Con this weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. He's the really? Gold Rush comic guy that we talked to on the show. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, St. Jude Thaddeus is the best. He's the patron saint of lost causes. It's kind of meta. <laughs> well, Miles is really awesome, other than he really likes Hillary. Well, mm. you can like Hillary and still be a good person. <laughs> I'm, I'm all like, I like everybody. Um, Katie Dotson, YouTube is my favorite place to watch, listen to the podcast. Uh-oh, it didn't go. And see the faces of the people I am listening to. Good job as always, guys. Yay. Woo! Uh, Trippin' Fool. Sorry to hear about your back, Wesley. I love the show and try to listen to every episode. Much as for the podcast, we can listen anywhere and favor star rank highest we can. Fucking A. Thank you. Yeah, and really my do. Back is better. Really do miss seeing y'all, though. Y'all. Hi. Aw, so. yay. Uh, Jaded um, Zappa at... Shinhon Soma? Shinhon Soma? Not racist at all. X Shinhon Shinhon Soma. Okay. At okay. I would watch I would watch on YouTube if I had the time. I typically listen while commuting or working. No time to watch. Smiley face. Uh, good point. I think most people probably listen in the car yep. or something like that. So but, or at work where you can't watch. But, but we got enough feedback. We said if one person commented, yeah. we would continue video. We are continuing a video. And I'm Excuse me. I made a discovery. A so I made a discovery recently to improve our. Wow, I am burping. 
Sure. I made a discovery recently that would allow for much better uh, video capture on the webcams for Lauren's face and mine together. <laughs> And also for better catching Wesley. And I think soon we will actually successfully have a guest on video on the show. Woo! woo Give me some time to work out the details, it won't be but our dogs. it will happen. It'll be an actual person. Um, okay, regarding episode 144 with Ben Radford, Randy LaMonda. 141. 141 with Ben Radford. Randy LaMonda at Randy LaMonda. Uh, speaking of clowns, the movie Evil Clowns from Outer Space. Love it. Um, scared me to death as a kid. They are making a sequel, I believe. Holy yeah. shit. I want, yeah. the, I want the next one. It's either a sequel or a TV series. Something in the back of my mind is saying TV series, which would be so funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got uh, Rife from Sweden. So, hello. Sweden? Sweden. Does he know Ramos? <laughs> Does he know Ramos? S- Rife, do you know Ramos? And King Walgos. of Sweden? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Sweden does not have a king. Sweden has a queen. Yeah, well, if you're Robus, I think. You're d- or am I wrong? If your name oh. is Robus, you're definitely the king of Sweden. I would be so disappointed if I was so, wrong on that. Hello. First, let me tell you I'm less dixic and Swedish, so my spelling is bad. <laughs> <laughs> really? Nobody's heard this before. Come on. Dislike? Less, less dixic. Yes. <laughs> I had to go See, read it. There's a joke there. I didn't get what you were even. He okay. meant dyslexic. No, I didn't. I didn't. Let, no. let's, it's funny if you're dyslexic. Yeah. Well, maybe so, not. And not sensitive. Anyway, my yeah. ice cream is So, good. I have listened to your podcast from the start, and I like it. You are a calm pod, not like the scathing hint or the cognitive next hint. And I like the episode that you talk about mental problems. Uh, one thing that is interesting is the difference between your American view and my Swedish view uh, between religious and different religions. Uh, some of the problems that you talk about so far is what we have in Sweden. We are atheist agnostic and are the majority. And as a nurse, a lot of my colleagues are religious. If you like, I can come. Um, if you like, I can come to your show and talk, oh. which would be awesome. Um I like. I now (laughs) probably. I know probably. I I know probably you get this all the time, but I like you, and we can have a conversation first via email. So yeah, Mm -hmm. hey, we're working on that. So uh, yes, and sorry, and yes, the difference in in healthcare in particular, because I work in healthcare, Lauren works in healthcare. (laughs) The the problem is that healthcare organizations, by and large were founded originally by religious orders. Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Adventist, if they're more recent. Uh, but they are religious in nature and founding. So it is not surprising that a lot of medical schools are putting out religious people. I remember in Walla Walla, in my Adventist upbringing, that as far as ministry goes, being a pastor came first. Medical ministry was a thing. Mm. If you were a doctor, you could do ministry and get rich at the same time. <laughs> and it's funny that this was brought up. Just yesterday we were discussing you know, how interesting it would be to have a podcast dedicated to secularism and mental health. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this awesome. ties right into that. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if this nurse in particular works in the mental health field, but... We would. I personally think that we would benefit I, from having uh, an interview like that. I would. I'm, I'm actually of the mind that I would love to actually have a skeptically, atheistly themed uh, uh, medical podcast. Me, me, yes, about uh, health issues, mm-hmm. medical issues like this, mental health issues in particular. Yes, thank you. This is something that I could definitely see. Sp- being a, a, a spin-off podcast from our, our our show like tons of guests in in said fields and, mm-hmm. yeah and us talking shit because we don't know that much about it <laughs> Honest, yeah. honestly I'm, I hear, I'm hearing the wrap-up music in my head yep uh, from the recovering gringo uh-huh. I happened upon your podcast oddly enough via iTunes after redacted's nagging to give him a review <laughs> also to give other redacted person as many one-star reviews as possible. <laughs> I have no idea who he is, but the idiots at Breitbart seem to think he's hot stuff. Mm. <laughs> nice to hear voices from other parts of the country. 
I just for the first time uh, rode through your fine state over the summer on a oh. trip to Seattle. So actually through both of our fine states. Yeah. And uh, I actually spent the majority of the time in Idaho, not actually on purpose. <laughs> there was a work fiasco, and I had to pull over every 20 miles or so and walk people through crap. The Explosive OSI model diarrhea. is a bit for some people to grok. We call it initially the Father's Day Massacre. The massacre was of encrypted packets. <laughs> Geek Gallows humor. Yes, I have tried to master the OSI model, and in my opinion... It is outdated bullshit. All right. Yeah. It's packets of data flowing through magical streams. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Magic, okay. uh, my experience with the uh, lo uh, locals was interesting. I was there when Charleston shootings happened, but listening to auto audiobooks, not news, or my normal slate of podcasts, I had no idea it happened until later. Whoops. The number of pickups with huge Confederate flab Fla uh, flags flapping confuse the crap out of me. I'm used to that from my part of the country, from downstate Illinois, but really didn't expect that in a mountain state. Not sure if that's just normal or was specific to the events surrounding that. Would be interested to hear some perfect perspectives on that from someone who lives there. Lauren, you are an Idaho native. What do you have to say about Confederate flags in Idaho? Uh, Idaho was largely... Um, uh, when he populated. populated by people leaving uh, the South in the Civil War so that they can go West and bake a uh, second South. So Basically uh, to escape, rec uh, uh, not reconciliation, uh, reconstruction. Yeah. So um, not surprising that there is a lot of uh, Confederate flags here with little town names such as Atlanta, Dixie, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, however, it's ridiculous that um, the blatant... Uh, racist tones are being covered up as some kind of heritage. Yeah. Uh, that, that's bullshit, and we all know it's bullshit, and a lot of those people got called out uh, in the media, uh, but there's not much we can do about it. Idaho is the south of the west, and whenever I say thank God for Mississippi, it's only because that keeps Idaho from being at the lowest point yep. in the U.N. General, <laughs> generally speaking, when it comes to education in particular, the ranking... Number 50 is Mississippi. Number 49 is usually Idaho. It's, it's a tie between Idaho and Alabama. And I happen to know and for occasionally a fact, Arkansas. people in Alabama and Arkansas, they also say thank God for Mississippi because yeah. Alabama's awful. And Mississippi's worse, apparently. So. so if you were to redraw the map and move places around, Idaho belongs like right in between Mississippi and Arkansas. Not next to Oregon and Washington, the bastions of liberal awesomeness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Else? Climatologically, not so much. Oh, where are we at now? Um, if you want to contact us, you can always call us at 541-203-0666. You can email us at contactatheistnomads.com. If you want to send Wesley hate mail, Wesley at AtheistNomads.com. You, know, you can get me with uh, information about technical production at Dustin at AtheistNomads.com. And Lauren or at, if you just want to compliment him on his wife. And Lauren at ScienceMyself at Gmail.com for her new project that might eventually take An, off. Uh, yeah, a, a side project of Nomad Productions. You know, my, my buzzy, kind of drunky laugh sounds kind of like Salacious Crumb. <laughs> <laughs> and always Facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads, Twitter uh, slash Atheist, or at Atheist Nomads. And we always also wait, we also always want to thank our supporters. You guys rock. We couldn't do it without you. Seriously. And, Actually, no, we wouldn't do this without you. And next week... <laughs> And, oh, I joke. I joke. and next week, we'll be back at you with an interview. I got to pee. All right. <laughs> <laughs>